Welcome. This is Dr. Bob Johnson with Vital 100 Podcast. And today we have a very, very special guest, uh, Dr. Granite from Buffalo Grove, uh, Illinois, uh, who has a very, not only a very special story, but he is a very skilled chiropractor. So I know we're all going to learn a lot from his um, podcast today. So welcome, Dr. Granite. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you having me on your show. Well, it's always good to have very special guests who have not only, like I said, a story, but also are very talented practitioners who can share a lot with our audience, a lot of good information. So I know you're a chiropractor, but um, how did you become a chiropractor? What motivated you to become a chiropractor and kind of what your, um, what, what is your special story to get to where you are now? Okay, um, I will try and make this uh, quick because it's a long story, but um, it's not the type of story that you normally hear where, you know, I went to a chiropractor and the chiropractor did something miraculous for me and they healed me and this is why I wanted to become a chiropractor. What actually happened uh, is I actually wanted to be a dentist um, uh, and that's what I was doing all my training in. But as it came time closer to go to school, I knew I couldn't afford to go into dentistry. And being of Eastern European descent, my parents always said that you're going to be a doctor. Like, no matter what, you're going to be a doctor. And so I didn't know what I was going to do at that point. And in my last, uh, it was, I think, the last few days of university, um, I saw my friend walking and I said, hey, what are you doing? Like, what's going on? What are you going into? We just finished our, I believe it was uh, uh, one of the chemistry exams. And he said, I'm, I just got accepted into chiropractic schools. I said, what, what, what's chiropractic? I don't even know what chiropractic is. And he's like, well, well it's, a, it's a doctor that uh, focuses on uh, the nervous system and uh, joint health and muscle health. I said, but it's a doctor. And he said, yes, it's a doctor. I said, okay, so where do I sign up? And I said, is it hard to get in? Is it, what is the cost? And he told me, and it seemed to work. And not knowing anything about chiropractic, um, I got accepted into Chicago uh, in Lombard, Illinois, to the National University of Health Sciences, and I proceeded to um, enroll in the school, not really knowing what chiropractic was at all. And how I learned what chiropractic was is that in my first trimester, uh, at the end of my first trimester, uh, we went on a trip with a friend of mine to Jamaica, and I got into a plane crash there. And uh, um, after the plane crash, um, my leg was paralyzed. I mean, we all lived. Luckily, everybody survived. It was a small plane. Um, when we crashed into the swamp, um, there was a, a, a fuel pump failure. Uh, we went about 500 feet, maybe more in the air, and then we crashed. Um, and we all walked away, but my leg was paralyzed at that time due to significant uh, um, spine damage in my lower back. And at that time, I began to discover what chiropractic was because people, uh, I was told that I was going to have to do surgery based on the MRIs and everything that I received. And I said, I'm not doing surgery. And so this is how I began to discover the power of chiropractic. Um, I started going to chiropractic twice a day for six months for heavy duty physical therapy and chiropractic manipulation. And that got me um, back on my feet um, along with other modalities um, like acupuncture. And this is how I learned the power of alternative medicine stemming from chiropractic because within a year I was back in school when I thought my career was going to be over and I really got a chance firsthand to learn the power of how the body can heal itself as long as you give it the right tools to do so. And that's kind of the gist of how I got into chiropractic. It's amazing how we um, become motivated in certain things and become very good by actually experiencing it ourselves. I've had that happen many times myself yeah. and know how motivating that can be. So, wow, that's a very, very impressive story. And uh, so yes. uh, um, you, I, I know from your background, you are a functional medicine chiropractor, but how does that differ from alternative medicine? Um, I, I, I think functional medicine um, I, I, and alternative medicine, I guess functional medicine is uh, um, a branch of medicine that uh, can be practiced by medical doctors and can be practiced by chiropractors. So in each field, we have the ability to specialize, just like medicine has the ability to specialize 
into specific um, specialties like cardiology and gastroenterology. Uh, we in chiropractic have the ability to do that. And functional medicine is actually a specialty subtype of, uh, you can be a medical doctor and do functional medicine, and you can be a chiropractor and do functional medicine. And now, uh, because chiropractors do not prescribe medications, we would not have the ability to take a patient off or on, or put patients on um, medications, and we would use basically natural ways of balancing the body. Um, medical doctors would have the ability to use medications, take them on and off, but also have the ability to use natural substances, which to help the body. So I'm not sure if you want to consider chiropractic, uh, functional medicine, something that's alternative. I guess it depends who specializes in it, whether it would be considered falling under the branch of an alternative type of an approach. So, um, but the difference, um, basically what functional medicine is, the approach of functional medicine is, uh, the easiest way for me to do it is kind of to compare it to traditional medicine. And in traditional medicine, like I said, we have these specialties, and that's how um, the approach of traditional medicine looks at a specific process in the body or disease. Let's say there's a problem with your um, intestines, so you would go to a gastroenterologist. Let's say there's a problem with your heart, so you'd go to a cardiologist. There's a problem with your foot, you would go to a podiatrist. In functional medicine, all those kind of borders are taken away, and we look at the body as the whole, to understand all the interactions that exist between these different systems in our body. And because across all those systems, we have things like inflammation, toxic loads, um, cellular dysfunction, that exists in each one of the symptoms. And by understanding how these systems interact, we can have a different approach to treating the patient in a very individualized way. That's one of the main differences of how functional medicine works. Um, the other thing that we have to look at is that traditional medicine is more disease-oriented, right? And uh, functional medicine is more health-oriented. In other words, we're looking at the cause. We're not looking at the symptom of the disease. We're not saying, you know, if you're coming in to me with, um, uh, let's say, an autoimmune disease, we're not going to give you a drug to suppress your immune system because that's what's causing the problem. We're going to look at what is causing that autoimmune disease to be there in the first place. And we're going to go from that perspective. So we're kind of going from the inside out for, and, and looking at the environment, at looking at all the stressors, and looking at all those different things, and seeing what we need to take away or what we need to add back in in order to help the patient versus just focusing on the disease process. So that's a big difference. So it's a good question you asked me, but I'm not sure whether I would put functional medicine specifically in the alternative medicine kind of uh, umbrella. I guess it depends how you practice functional medicine, whether it's going to be alternative or more of a traditional. I think that um, the way you seem to practice, as opposed to traditional medicine, um, is that the body is totally interconnected. Everything from the top of the head down to the bottom of the feet and energetically right. throughout the body, everything is all um, connected and functions yes. together. Whereas Absolutely. in traditional medicine, we have all these specialties and they serve as uh, an individual unit, which with many traditional physicians is not connected to any other unit. And so that's, correct. that's, where, that's where I think you and I differ in our understanding of how the body functions. Oh, I agree 100%. And uh, it's uh, the fact that um, having this kind of understanding and uh, of the interplay of what the body can do can give us a lot of different insights and a different approach in order to help each one of our patients. Given that understanding for our listening audience, can you go over a case or two that you have come across where this... Um, integrative functional medicine has helped resolve a person's problems? Okay, so um, I'll give you an example. Um, I have, uh, I guess, uh, uh, the population that I, I treat um, are a lot of uh, ideas post and pre or just like around that menopausal age when there's a lot of different changes that happen with, uh, um, with the uh, woman population, with the female population. And so they've been to a lot of different uh, doctors, and a lot of them come in with uh, symptoms like, you know, they have a decrease in hair, uh, decrease in energy, their hair is falling out, they're starting to gain weight, 
uh, they get brain fog, um, their skin is not what it used to be, and all those symptoms that they're experiencing, they go to the medical doctor and they do a test, a very, I, I would say, um, very general type of a blood test. And based on the test, they tell these patients, you know what, you're completely fine. But yet the patients are still experiencing all these symptoms and they don't know what to do. And some of them are put on uh, different kinds of medications. And uh, for a while, they'll tell me the medication has been helping. And then afterwards, they said that the doctor just keeps increasing the medication, but the medication is no longer helping. And I'm still experiencing these symptoms, especially when we're dealing with uh, thyroid type of cases, which can affect so many different parts of the body. So I had a patient who came in, and the first thing that, uh, that we did the type of testing that functional medicine teaches us to do are on a much deeper level. So, for instance, for a thyroid condition, uh, you, in a traditional um, approach, you would get your TSH and your T4 tested. And a lot of times, those come back within range. Um, and uh, um, I'll talk about ranges in a second, lab ranges, which is also very important. Um, and they're told that, you know, you're completely fine. But I look at another seven different thyroid tests. Right. And so there's nine in total. Can that give me more information? You better believe it can give me more information. And using that information, I can now tell you the patient. I mean, is the thyroid condition really coming from the fact that you're deficient in a specific mineral like iodine? Or is it an autoimmune, meaning is it an immune problem? I can also tell the patient if it's maybe a gut issue or a liver issue, because that's where thyroid hormones get converted from an active to a, from an inactive to an active form. Having this information, I was able to help this patient get back on track because we determined it was actually an autoimmune condition. So we needed to first off modify her diet because she was eating a lot of gluten type of products, a lot of processed foods. As soon as we took her off of those foods, and the reason why is because our immune system a lot of times can get triggered by different foods to hyperreact. I'm not going to go into a very detailed, uh, uh, I guess, description right now of how all that happens, but our immune system can, uh, due to uh, dysfunction in our gut, can then react to different foods that we're eating, especially gluten. And it can mistake gluten for one of our organs, like the thyroid tissue, and it can start attacking it. So by decreasing different kinds of foods and putting her on the right kinds of foods and giving her the right supplements to support the immune system, we were able to calm down her body. Her energy returned. She was able to concentrate and focus better. And now she understood what she needed to do and how her body worked so that it does not get repeated. I think it's very important that people understand how critical both our diet and environmental influences affect overall health. I agree with you 100%. I mean, that's the starting point for me every single time. That's the, just just fixing the diet, just fixing the diet, I will solve maybe up to 40% of the cases just by fixing the diet and doing nothing else. I'll give you another example. I had another guy who came into me and he was a fairly healthy guy and he called me up. He said, look, my cholesterol is up at 800. My doctor wants to put me on a statin. I'm not going on a statin, but my doctor is freaking out and he wants me to put me on a cholesterol lowering drug. And he said, I don't know what to do. I said, well, tell me about, you know, he said, I'm healthy. I'm doing exactly what my doctor is telling me to do. I'm exercising three to five times a week. I'm eating oatmeal for breakfast. I'm eating a lot of fruits. I'm barely eating any kind of meat. I'm eating a lot of uh, uh, grains, like whole grains and things like that. I said, you know what? I said, that could be your problem. I said, he goes, what do you mean? Uh, fruits and whole grains, those are supposed to be healthy. I said, yes, they may be healthy, but I said, because your cholesterol is up at 800, you may have some kind of genetic factor going on underneath. You may, you may not, but let's just test it out. And so we took them off completely off the fruit, completely off the grains, and went completely counterintuitive to what he thought. We put them on protein. We put them on good fats and took out all the rest of those uh, um, sweet stuff. Anything um, that has glucose, fructose, anything sweet, any kind of carb, will increase cholesterol, especially in some people to that point. And as soon as we did that, what was so interesting, almost unbelievable, that in three weeks, <clears throat> he did this before we were gonna do all the deep testing. And in three weeks time, um, we did the testing that I do because he just didn't have time to come in. But he was already following this protocol. 
And after only three weeks, which seemed almost unbelievable, we tested him and I got the, another couple of weeks later, I got the results back and his cholesterol had decreased from 800 to almost being normal. And he's like, is that possible? Is there an error in the test? And I said, you know what? I think we need to repeat this because this seems a little unbelievable for me too. And sure enough, we repeated the test and the results came in the same. And when he went to the doctor, the doctor had no explanation for it, right? And so that's why I say diet and a specific kind of a diet for the right person um, done correctly can do amazing things. I would be um, wondering whether the doctor that this patient went back to would be curious enough to maybe do some research in how his cholesterol dramatically dropped. He wasn't. I asked what the doctor said. He said the doctor didn't say anything. He said he had no explanation. And when he asked him, he said, you know, whatever, you're doing good. Just keep doing what you're doing. You know, again, you know, it's some doctors work in a specific way. And I just want to say I'm not against traditional medicine. I think traditional medicine is important. And in acute injury, in acute cases, I'm not going to go to somebody who's going to give me a supplement. If, God forbid, I'm in a, you know, in a, in a car crash or some kind of acute kind of a condition, I want to go to the hospital and I want those doctors to help me and I want to do short-term medicine if I need to. But to a, for a chronic kind of a condition, you need to consider all aspects of how the body works in order to have the results. I've said that all the time, that traditional medicine is great for more acute issues and we certainly need them, but to uh, to re- resolve chronic health issues, it really doesn't do very well in that arena. And that's where people who are working with functional medicine and environmental medicine and so forth are much better suited or homeopathics, that kind of thing, are much better suited to resolve the chronic health issues. Definitely. I would definitely 100% agree with that. Tell me a little bit, Dr. Granite, about the special assessment tools that you use to evaluate patients. And and I I tell people that many times traditional assessment assessment tools like blood tests and so forth don't turn up what the problems are for quite a while. So what special assessment tools do you use to help um, speed up the identification of what's going on underlying a person's health issue? Um, Okay, so um, as far, I just want to say something about blood tests. Um, Yes, traditional blood testing, I would say you have to wait a while uh, to really see what's going on. But when you're doing um, testing, uh, blood testing on uh, a deeper level and understanding how these uh, factors on the blood test fit together. In other words, we're taught to read blood work in a very different way and just looking if something is too high or too low and then giving somebody that something to try and correct it. We're really taught to look at different patterns and uh, by looking at these patterns and understanding how things work together, that gives us a whole different level of, uh, of uh, um, insight and uh, understanding when the problem is beginning. The other thing that uh, functional medicine doctors do differently on the blood work is we have something called functional ranges. Now, when you look at a blood test, they have something called the lab range, and it's very, very wide. In other words, let's say, let's take, uh, for instance, blood sugar, for example. When you look at a blood sugar, the lab range for blood sugar could be anywhere from like 65 to 100. That's considered, if you fall anywhere in between that, you're considered okay. But I can tell you right now, once my patients start going over that 85, they can already begin to experience blood sugar types of symptoms, and they don't even know it yet. And so in functional medicine, we take those ranges and we kind of shrink them down, and we look at more of the middle point and see how far away you are from that midpoint to give us an idea that the process of disease may already be beginning. Those symptoms are already here. And you don't have to wait to fall outside of that range in order to begin treatment. That's one thing that we do differently. The other thing that I use on almost all my patients, because um, I can tell you that a lot of problems start in the gut. So we use a lot of stool testing. And stool testing is very important because it's gonna give us completely different kinds of information about what's going on in the gut. 
and uh, since a lot of stuff, you know, obviously all disease, I believe, begins in the gut, right? It goes back to diet. So when I have that proper um, uh, gut analysis, I'm able to see, is there any kind of improper parasites or improper um, dysbiosis or some kind of inflammation? What is going on inside that gut area? And using that information, I'm able to determine what can be at the heart of the patient's symptoms. That's another testing that I think is very important. The other stuff that we do is uh, um, testing for things like, um, uh, we use a, a lab called Cyrex Labs, and they have very, very um, uh, deep testing, uh, immune type of testing, testing for different uh, antibodies, testing for different immune responses. And of course, we test things genetically to see if there's any kind of, uh, you know, uh, gene dysfunction, like uh, if the person's not able to utilize specific vitamins uh, and we need to give them extra. So all those tests form a very nice picture of what we need to do with each patient. The other thing that I also do, uh, go ahead, you wanted to ask, say something? No, 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 I, I go ahead. This is very, yeah. very interesting. The other thing that I also do, um, here's the thing with functional medicine where I run into uh, some issues. Uh, a lot of these tests are not covered by insurance, right? And, th and and it's nice when we go to a seminar and they tell us, well, do all these tests on the patient and then you'll get all the information you need and then this is what you do. And great, I'd love to do that. And then we come in and then each one of these tests can be very expensive and not everybody can afford these tests and not everybody is able to do those tests. So that kind of ties my hands to understand what's going on. So I always doing the minimal amount of testing that I can do in order to get the most information. But I also learned a technique that I use with my patients. And this is a chiropractic technique. And it allows me to determine which systems are out of balance. And just to quickly sum up what that is, there is basically an interrelationship between the brain. And it's fair to say that the brain pretty much controls everything in our body, right? Would you agree with that? I totally agree. Right. And so there is actually six points in the back of the head that have nerve connections to different systems in our body. The cardiovascular system, the digestive system, the musculoskeletal system, the elimination system, the digestive system and the nervous system. Right. And so by being able to when we push each one of these points, depending on which one is tender, tells me that there is a problem in that system. And when I determine that there's a problem in that system, I now can have more information without actually doing some specific testing. Now, of course, if I can do the testing, I will do that. But if I can't do the testing, this is a great way for me to understand which system is out of balance and contributing to the systems of the patient. And then by stimulating specific points in the spinal cord based on my diagnosis, I can balance the brain and then make my actual treatments much more effective because now the body works properly and it's able to utilize the supplements and the actual dietary changes in a much more efficient way. So I've kind of combined the best of both worlds to get a much more uh, uh, direct, efficient, and cheaper type of a treatment that the patient can benefit from. Truly amazing. And it, I know from my work that what you're doing is helping a lot of people who would not normally get healthy if they were just committed to the traditional medical system. So congratulations, and I'm Thank sure you. your patients are benefiting tremendously. Thank you. You know, uh, it, it's too bad you talk about the insurance companies because our healthcare system in the U.S. is by far and away the most expensive in the world it is. based it is. on what each person is using or um, consuming in our healthcare system. So it, really it, would, it would make sense that some of these lesser expensive tests like allergy testing or those kind of tests should be covered by insurance companies because it would save them and clients a huge amount of money. But unfortunately, that's not the case. We're not now. there yet. We're not there yet. That's for we're, sure. We're not there We yet. are not. So in, in, in our closing time here, could you, and I know it, it's hard to say across the board certain things that should be done to get people healthy, but for those people who really truly want to be healthy or recover, give me three or four of the top things that you feel people should incorporate in their lives 
to have them take the next step in being overall healthy. Okay, so I know that people have heard this, but I, I'm sorry, there's no magic bullet here. Um, I'm gonna tell you that for me, the biggest thing that I see in my practice, that if you can do this one thing is uh, taking sugar out of your uh, system, taking uh, that processed food out of your system. Um, I see that um, uh, as one of the biggest contributors to so many different problems. Um, if you're not doing that, if you're not, I, I, I'm not talking, of course, I'm telling you, have a great diet and everything, uh, but just take that out of your system, the soft drinks, that those, uh, you know, the candies, all of that. If you just do that, if that's what you're consuming right now, you will see significant improvement in your, uh, in your overall health. The other thing that I want to tell everybody is, you didn't break in one day. Your system didn't break down in one day. It's not going to be, and if you have these serious issues that you're coming in to uh, get treated, especially in function medicine, you have to understand that your expectations need to be a little bit differently than when you're taking a pill. Because people are used to that, I take a pill, I feel a difference, right? But in functional medicine, what I want to say is when you do um, get to that point. And I know that some of you are not there yet. And uh, I hope that you don't need functional medicine because you're so healthy. But if you do get there in order to correct the body, it takes time and it takes a little bit of effort. And that's what's great about functional medicine. You work together with the doctor, but you got to put in your time and that way you will get the results. But it takes time for the body to repair. I give this as as an example, it's like going and, and, and looking at a, you know, an old house, right? That old house that you're about to buy, it didn't get that way overnight. It took time for people not taking care of it. And you can go and paint the house and make it look good, but if you didn't replace the pipes and you didn't replace the uh, elect electrical stuff, it's going to break down. The same thing with our body. It mm -hmm. needs specific steps to get to the point of healing, and it takes a little bit of time for that to happen. Be patient work with your doctor and you will see the results and those results are long standing. Obviously, the other two things I can say, the other major thing that I see, sleep. If you can, you know, if you can take sleep, literally, the amount of benefits that you get from proper sleep, if you could take sleep and put it in a bottle as medicine, I would say that <laughs> corrects so many different problems, it's unbelievable. And, I, and I, I'm guilty of this too. I, I, I'm going to be honest that we sacrifice our sleep for our work, for our other things, because that's something that we can do. But I implore you, don't do that because that's when your body can repair itself. It's free of charge. You can do it. Just make sure you give your body the ability to do that. And those are the three things that I would say you need to pay attention to. I want to just emphasize two of those things that you said. One is getting the sugar out of your diet, and yeah. in this country, we have such a uh, obesity, overweight epidemic, and yeah. almost all of that's because of all the sugar that we're yeah. that's in our foods and we're taking. And the sugar, I'm sorry, the food industry loads up the foods with yeah. sugar. And what I would tell people is to go to the internet and Google the many names for sugar, because there's well yeah. over 50 names oh, yeah. uh, you know, um, that are on labels that people can say, and if they see them, to avoid yeah. those foods. Absolutely. And, the, and, and, and so that, to me, is just hugely important, because obesity is a major issue. Yeah. And the other thing is, as you said, we didn't get unhealthy overnight, and that people have to be a part of their own treatment. It's, it, it isn't health in a bottle. And no. so people really have to become uh, a, a big part of their own health. So I, I totally agree with those things that you, you talked about. So very, very yeah. good. So you. you have given our audience just a huge amount of information. And I agree with every word that you talked about. Um, could you tell us a little bit more how people can find you? Because I certainly want people to be able to take advantage of your skills and your knowledge so they can get healthy. Oh, thank you so much. So um, if you go to my website at granitewellnesscenter.com, uh, it's granite is spelled G-R-A 
natwellnesscenter.com. That's my website. The phone number of how to reach me is on there. And also I have an Instagram, uh, a very active Instagram um, uh, uh, page uh, where I post every other day uh, health information, uh, even thing, everything from things I cook at my house to um, what you should and shouldn't eat, um, which supplements to take. And uh, if you want to find me on there and get in touch with me, um, I would be more than happy to help you. Um, it is Dr. Dr. Period uh, Granite uh, and uh, Edward. Sorry, Dr. Period Edward Granite. And if you enter those keywords, you'll be able to find me on Instagram. And you can either private message me or just leave your comments, and I'll be glad to contact you. I work with many patients, not even in my local practice across the state. I do, like you said, we do have an obesity epidemic. And I work with many patients uh, doing weight loss across different states. So if that is something, obviously I can't do the chiropractic long distance, but the nutrition and the functional medicine, I do have patients in all different states. So if you're interested and you have a health issue, I'd be glad to help you. And, and just so people know, your office or Buffalo Grove, Illinois, is just a little bit north of Chicago, if I'm not mistaken. That's right. It's about 35 minutes uh, north of uh, Chicago City, and uh, the address there is 1401 West Dundee Road, uh, Buffalo Grove, Illinois. You can find that on my website. That's also there. I just want to add one more thing, and then uh, thank you very much, and that is one of my rules of thumb in, li in life and how I feel like I've grown and evolved is that when you see an expert like yourself, um, and they're doing something that you want to achieve, become uh, an advocate of that person, become a follower of that person. So if they want to be healthy, please go to uh, your site and, and inquire about it and study about it because there's nothing more important than your health. I agree with you. Yeah, it's one of those things. Once you lose it, it's so hard to get it back. So don't pay for other things with your health because it's the most valuable thing you can ever have. So I want to thank you very much. And thank you. I hope thank you for having me on. Have a wonderful day. Take you care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Vital 100. Please check out our website, vital100wellness.com, for other ways to listen to our podcast as well as additional health resources. If you have questions for Dr. Bob, or if you have feedback or recommendations for the podcast, please send an email to info at vital100wellness.com.